So an IQA strategy should take into account all aspects of the assessment process from when the learners commence to when they complete. So think of an IQA strategy as the starting point for all the activities and sampling which you will carry out. So if you don't have an effective IQA strategy, incorrect assessment decisions could be made leading to invalid judgments. So having a strategy will help you to plan what will be monitored and ensure that your quality assurance systems are fit for purpose. If you are quality assuring and accredited qualification, it will be a requirement of the awarding organization that you will have a written strategy. So the strategy should be a written statement based on the IQA rationale and any possible risk factors. So remember, a rationale is a statement regarding why IQA will take place, which is to ensure all activities and evidence are valid and reliable. Systems should also be in place to ensure that all concepts and principles are met and that monitoring and sampling is effective. The strategy might be produced by your organization or it might be your responsibility to write it. So your strategy should take into account factors such as the assessment methods. So are they safe? Are they valid? Are they fair? And are they reliable? Are they complex? Are they varied? Or do they include initial assessments, online assessments, and any witness testimonies? We're also taking into account what has been assessed. So is this the qualification, the standards or criteria? And are your assessors familiar with these and are they about to be revised? Then you have the availability of assessors for observations and meetings. Some assessors could be located at a distance and can activities take place remotely, so using Teams and Zoom. Experience workload and caseload of your assessors. So experienced assessors can be sampled less than new assessors because they are more familiar with the requirements. And some assessors might work part-time or have other work commitments. So some assessors might even have more learners than others. So we need to weigh up these factors. Then we're also looking at the number of learners to assessors. So allocating learners to assessors should be fair and assessors should not be overloaded. Units and aspects. So we're talking about how your assessors will interpret them differently or how learners might have problems achieving them. So an IQA must ensure that the assessor has judged against specific criteria within the units and answers. The IQA must check to ensure that the assessor has used sound rationale and justification provided for assessment decisions against the learning outcomes. The IQA must also ensure that the assessor marked against the awarding organization required standards. So for the specific unit and the evidence provided by the learner that coherent with the learning outcomes, the IQA should also ensure that there is enough communication between the assessor and the IQA to ensure that the coursework is standardized and consists with any previous assessment decisions. Mm -hmm.